Hello everyone, and welcome back to Toto Santos. Today, we are going to be continuing on with this tourist area next to the cruise docks, which I made last episode, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so we're just going to be filling in this area with some details that I suppose you might expect in a, a touristy area, which is going to include things such as pools and parking and uh, roundabouts, you know, all the, all the things that come to mind when you think of tourism. We're going to be doing all of that. And then we're also going to be decorating the old docks in this area, which I mentioned last episode. But I'll talk a bit more about that when we actually get to that location of the city. Oh, look, more floating people. Cool. Okay, now that we've gotten the obligatory uh, floating prisoners out of the way, I don't know why they do that. Uh, now we're going to move on and I'll uh, actually talk about what I'm doing here. So I started with this space in between the uh, the facade of, of buildings that we made last time and the giant parking garage, which are going to be uh, decorating a bit later. And I just wanted to uh, make it look like there's a little bit of used space by the hotel here with that pool. Just some very simple decoration to make it look a little bit nicer. And then they are separated from this area by a, a row of trees and a fence there. And this is uh, what I ended up deciding to be um, one of the bus barns for the city. So this is where they keep all their extra buses that are not currently in service. I just want to do something a little bit more industrial looking, or not quite industrial, but uh, just a little bit more practical looking. Uh, just to kind of emphasize that this is like a, a facade of, of nice buildings that's, uh, you know, covering up the more functional part. And uh, in San Juan, in the area where I'm taking inspiration from, there is actually a, a building like this. There's like an area with a bunch of buses in it. I can't quite tell if it's like a public uh, bus area where they keep city buses or if it's um, a place owned by one of the the cruise lines that you know keeps their tour buses there I have no idea I just decided that I wanted this one to be a area for the city to keep some of their excess buses and I've been using this exit door here all over the city I just I really love this asset I think it's like part of the tunnel assets for like the big urban roads pack uh, don't quote me on that but fairly certain it's just you know one of those assets that, that comes with a network um, but I just think it adds a really nice look uh, at, especially at the back of buildings like this like these are all all these buildings are facing away from this area because they you know don't necessarily want to have their hotel rooms or whatever overlooking the bus barn <laughs> uh, with its these rusted fences and everything uh, so these are all the backs of the buildings and I just wanted to uh, kind of show that with those emergency exit doors which I just think had a little bit of realism and a, a touch of, of detail and interest to these buildings, which are, you know, detailed and interesting on their own, uh, in their own right. Uh, but still, you can always spruce them up a little bit and just uh, help them blend into the environment. Okay, and now I'm moving on to this oversized parking garage, which is functional, so cars do actually park on top, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, cars were always visible being parked here, and I just wanted to make better use of the space on top here instead of having uh, kind of these overly wide lanes for cars to drive through. So I just put another couple rows of parking here and there to make it look a little more crowded because this is supposed to be quite a busy place. This is the main way for tourists to enter the city and there are also quite a few hotels here. So I just wanted to make it look like there's a lot of traffic and a lot of uh, rental cars parked here. Although there is fairly uh, good transit access here, so a lot of people do actually use buses, but you know, I'm just gonna keep the uh, practical game side of it separate from the aesthetic side. So that way we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get lots of people renting cars and using cars here. And we also actually have people using all the buses that run through here, which is nice. Uh, some of them being city buses and some of them being those cruise buses I, I showed off at the end of the prior episode. Uh, but we'll be getting more detail into the transit a bit later when we do some bus stops and uh, decorate this whole pedestrian area. So I have this little taxi waiting area, a little taxi stand, I guess, um, which I, I really like just this very simple look with these uh, actually very simple but pretty nice looking concrete benches, in my opinion. Uh, I really enjoy that asset, especially you can uh, fit it into all different kinds of, of decorations and, and plazas and, you know, various uh, public or, or private parks, that kind of thing. And on the subject of taxis, you know, I have these taxi assets that actually drive around and serve as taxis with the After Dark DLC, but people don't really use them, which is kind of annoying because I feel like in a, in a city like this, especially where there's lots of tourism and it's, uh, you know, it's quite spread out, it seems like there would be a lot of taxi use or, or there should be, and there just isn't. 
So I wish, I don't know, maybe there's a mod to, to increase the rate at which people use taxis versus driving. It's really what I, you know, I wouldn't want to take away from uh, how many people use buses and trains because I just really enjoy seeing everyone, you know, load onto a bus. But sometimes buses just get like really full and there are hundreds of people waiting at a single bus stop for one bus. Uh, you know, there's no way I can, I can solve that kind of demand without having alternative transit routes. But I just wish that, you know, somehow you could have those people be more likely after waiting for a certain amount of time to switch to a taxi or something like that. I don't know, just some way to better spread out the uh, demands for certain forms of transportation, because I imagine that's how it works in real life. Like, you're not going to wait 20 hours to get into a bus because every bus is full. You know, at some point you're going to call it quits and <laughs> call a cab or just walk. For example, you might want to walk along this uh, pedestrian area that I'm creating now, and obviously People don't naturally walk along the key itself, although I believe there are key assets on the workshop where you can set it up to do that. But I wanted to manually decorate all of this anyway, so I just used a normal key and uh, laid a, a, the vanilla pedestrian path on top. This is something I've done quite a few times before, described how to do it. And then you can decorate it to your liking and uh, turn them into invisible paths, which I'm doing here so that you don't have the bridges sticking up. And because it's a path, the the Sims will generally prefer it to walking on the sidewalk, even if it takes a little bit longer. Um, so that's what we do. And then I have this little bridge asset here. I wasn't sure exactly how to uh, navigate carrying the pedestrians here across that green area. So I decided instead of you know developing that whole thing with more key and, and trying to, to manage the landscape, I decided just to leave that as a little natural green area at the end of the key. That's one of the easiest ways, in my opinion, to transition from a developed waterfront to a natural waterfront, is just to have lots of foliage to cover up any, any seams or gaps or any of that kind of thing that shows up. Um, but we'll come back in a minute to that and uh, put in some greenery, maybe some shrubbery, just stuff that looks nice and, and natural and uh, green, most likely. I wanted this pedestrian area to look uh, pretty consistent, like this is maybe like a joint effort between the city and the you know the hotels here and the, and the cruise ship companies that have the docks um, so they've just all pooled together some money to develop this area in a consistent way um, you know hoping that that would be mutually beneficial for everyone investing in it um, so I set down the poppable pavement there just to create a surface that looks uh, a little more even than the top of the key that was there and blends in better with the sidewalk on the road trying to make it look a bit more like one surface and of course, we're going to come in and add some more details to this uh, just to blend it in even more. Because really, when you, whenever you get uh, roads right up against a uh, change in elevation here, like you do, you have the, you know, the four lane avenue here and then uh, it drops down to the water. That's always going to give you kind of weird seams in your roads and the sidewalks. So you can't get a perfect look there uh, without really covering it up and, and, you know, doing everything you can to blend everything together. And I put down these little walls here uh, just to delineate the pedestrian area and, of course, delineate the roundabout here. Put down a couple of these very simple gravel blocks as well. And also a couple of completely normal looking cars uh, just so that, uh, you know, you can actually get the appearance of, of parking being there because cars aren't actually going to park there. Uh, there's no functionality built in there to the roundabout. Probably not the best idea to put parallel parking on a roundabout, but, you know, we're going to stick with it. And to let everyone know that they can park here, but not here because there's a bus stop putting down these uh, parking signs that I just think had a, a nice little level of detail. Uh, since tourists obviously wouldn't really know the rules of the road necessarily, uh, so you want to just make sure everything is appropriately signed so that they can uh, figure their way around here without uh, getting a traffic ticket. And then just trying to make sure pedestrians are considered by the cars by putting these uh, neon signs down. And I wanted to have crosswalks uh, pretty frequently along the road here. It's not like somewhere you would necessarily use as a through road uh, because there's so many people walking across. So you'd really only drive here if you were accessing something in the area. Uh, you know, of course, we do get a lot of traffic here through traffic or otherwise, but at least uh, the aesthetic is matching that, that look that we're going for. All right, I feel like my voice is taking away from the beauty of these road signs. So I'm just going to stop my commentary for the time being. And I'll meet you over by the big resort in just a second. Oh, 
wanted to include a few details here that just helped this uh, massive, absolutely massive building blend into the environment a bit more and just look like generally a nice place to be. I mean, it's probably nice enough on the inside, but it's a little imposing on the outside. So I wanted to add these hedges all around just to uh, kind of taper off from the, the, you know, the big gray walls. And also another one of those exit doors. Thought that was a nice little area there with like a little bit of a, an alley, I guess, in between the hedge and the wall. And other than that, just putting down some seating. Uh, this would be, you know, it's a, a resort of some kind, of course. The area around it would be a, in a space where tourists would pass through all the time. Um, so they just have all these public seating areas available and they've tried to make it, uh, you know, a nice enough place to be around. Again, that's sort of just the businesses here in the city cooperating to make a pleasing space that will make tourists want to come back again someday and uh, spend all their money here. And I'm just going for a fairly straightforward look with boxes of hedges uh, with a few simple trees poking out, maybe some flowers to fill in the space. Um, normally I like to go a bit more dense and a bit more complex with greenery, but I just didn't really feel like this was the area to turn into a forest. So I, I managed to show restraint with, with foliage for once. Very proud of myself. Also, I just love these little planter decals. Uh, I think they add a lot for just being a, you know, a tiny little square on the ground. <laughs> And I had some open space here, so I figured that this would be the, you know, the big main entrance to this resort that opens up right onto the waterfront, onto that pedestrian promenade area. So I wanted to give it a little bit of extra attention in terms of, uh, of making it look unique compared to the rest of the decoration of the area. So we have this little gravel planter space, and I'm just kind of mixing and matching the, from the palette I've used so far, plus adding a few new things like that fern there. And uh, having that lily pilly there, I, I kind of like how the, the roundness of the, of that trimmed, the lily pilly is that orange tree there. I like how the roundness of that matches up with the roundness of the, the planter beneath it. And then I'm also using these tile decals here, which look very nice and bright and uh, just generally like something you'd see at the front entrance of a resort. And I wanted this area to stand out a bit. Um, so we're gonna hop across the street there, across the crosswalk, and put down this very, very cool sculpture here. And then I just wanted to break up the concrete a little bit. It looked uh, quite plain. And this is sort of my go-to way to break up plain concrete in a park like this, is just put down some colored circles. You're good to go. And I just wanted to make it almost look like they're uh, supposed to represent like a lunar eclipse or something when the moon turns red. And of course that means that the shadow of the earth is on the moon, so there's the black circle. I don't know. Maybe that's what was going through the uh, the artist's head of whoever created this, whichever sim in, in Toto Santos created this. And then, you know, of course it's right next to the water, so it's going to get uh, quite moist over here, so I put down those beautiful puddle decals. I've already expressed my love for those last episode, so I'm not going to go into too much more detail with those. And we just light it up, because I imagine that a lot of people would be passing through here in the evening, uh, enjoying the nightlife of Toto Santos, uh, and they'd want to, you know, go and see what that uh, big red sculpture is all about at night, without, you know, tripping and falling into the the sea, <laughs> or you know, getting mugged or whatever. So just want to light it up and make it look nice and attractive, and uh, you know, relatively safe. Okay, now we're moving on to that port area I was talking about. So this is the old original port of the city. Maybe not quite the original, like from, you know, hundreds of years ago, but uh, the original uh, modern cargo port of the city, which has since been superseded by a much larger port that is yet to be built uh, in Todos Santos, but, uh, you know, someday soon, hopefully. But anyway, uh, these docks have been reclaimed and uh, are now used for various purposes. And this one we're starting with is I guess sort of a, a private uh, boat service area. Like small boats would come here and they'd uh, be serviced and refueled or you know, scrapped for parts or whatever uh, sort of stuff goes on with uh, small boats. And I use this technique, I think I remember seeing this in a, a City Skylines video years ago. It might've been a fresh popcorn video in San Monado, classic series, one of the best. But basically you use these uh, parking lot assets that have this very nice faded look and you put that along the edge of the dock. I'm not sure exactly uh, what um, like architectural feature of the dock that represents, but there, basically it looks like there's a different material uh, at the edge of the, the docks, and this parking lot just replicates that perfectly. 
and then I just created this very straightforward uh, secured entrance here uh, with a nice big chain link gate uh, just to keep the riffraff out. And that, and really this entire build is quite inspired by its uh, counterpart in San Juan. Although it looks like you know, that one dock there has been uh, turned into a park. Uh, I ended up not doing that because uh, I really only had the one dock here to work with and I just preferred doing this a uh, little more industrial rundown kind of area. And I guess uh, because it's a little bit more rough around the edges is why they need this intense security gate area here. Uh, in a second, I even put down these little, um, I, I'm not sure what they're called in real life. I'm going to call them tire slashers, but basically it keeps you from uh, entering through the exit lane. I just use those little drain decals there to represent that. But I thought that was uh, kind of a funny little detail. It always seems, uh, seemed a little harsh to me to, uh, you know, slash your tires if you're going the wrong way. But, uh, you know, I guess you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, I decided to do this build instead of the, the park one, just because we've been doing a lot of nice areas uh, in the city, which of course I, you know, I'm making my own city. Uh, I'm going to make it nice overall, but a little bit of grunge uh, doesn't hurt here and there. So yeah, I wanted to go with this instead of just making another standard park. Although it is a really cool idea to have a, a fancy park on, a, on an old reclaimed dock. Okay, it took me a couple tries to figure out how to, to get the right look for this dock. Um, I try using Surface Painter, I try using various decals. Um, what I end up settling on is going for a bit of a split look. So it's almost as if they're in the process of resurfacing this dock. So they've done the half that's closest to shore already. Uh, they've had that, you know, repaved here. Uh, so they just have normal concrete slabs. Um, and then over here, it's very run down. You know, it's right here next to the, the salt water. So the surfaces get eroded quite easily. Um, so it just uh, looks generally kind of broken down and a little gross. So I just go for uh, several iterations of decals, trying to see what combinations work. Yeah, and we've upgraded from flying people to flying cars, but don't worry about that. Uh, so I figured out that uh, simpler and, and just trying to, to find patterns with the decals is the best way to go. And really once I figure out the logic that I have, uh, you know, I have with the surface painter there, I have painted down pavement. So I just try to put like crack decals and stuff on that to show that that's like the pavement that's wearing away uh, and these patch decals and everything and then everywhere else uh, is you know brown or dirt or, or there's a little bit of grass poking up uh, where weeds have grown through and so really once I figure uh, that logic out it just kind of everything falls into place and I get to use all these very cool decals with uh, exposed plates and ex exposed I don't know what you call them bars I guess of where the concrete was and then just to sort of uh, seal this logic I come back with some poppable pavement just to make it look a little more regular and like there's still a, a bit more concrete left uh, because I thought it looked just a little bit too bare, a little bit too worn down with that much dirt and grass poking out. Okay, and now uh, th this is sort of like the issue I ran into with the cruise docks where I actually have no idea what kind of, of clutter you'd find <laughs> in an area like this. So I just use my imagination and uh, my backstory to this area is that this this dock was purchased by a bit of an eccentric person who is, uh, this is her chair here, by the way. She sits there in the evenings and watches the sunsets. Anyway, she's a bit of a hoarder of various industrial things for some reason. Uh, so there are different types of, of uh, construction vehicles and old semi-trailers and various materials. Uh, and then basically this person runs a business here where they uh, refuel boats and repair boats and, and scrap boats, like I said before. And so there are some various fuel tanks and supplies and that kind of thing. I also placed down a couple of functional industrial buildings here uh, off screen in just a bit, uh, just to get some traffic going in and out with various trucks and stuff, uh, you know, carrying in all the, the deliveries for this, uh, this lady who runs this strange mixture of boarding space and boat repair. Okay, I'm gonna stop blithering while I finish these details and I will meet you as we move on down the shoreline in just a moment.
because this is a uh, sort of marina or a little port for small boats like this, I figured we needed some uh, boats that were docked here. These would probably be the older ones that are here to be scrapped for parts or just to, you know, have major repairs done. And then there's that barge there. Um, I put a like a boat crane on there. Just ignore that. Uh, it probably should be on the dock for a bit more realism because uh, it seems like maybe a bad idea to try to lift a boat out of the water using a crane on another boat that's not significantly bigger. That's just my general understanding of the laws of physics. I, I, you know, I don't really have any experience with doing this kind of thing. Just trying to deduce from what I already know about how the world works, uh, which I don't know much. Uh, but it really does seem like lifting the boat up out of the water might make the uh, barge on which this crane is situated uh, go into the water. Uh, so that's your physics lesson for the day. So I just tried to go through my assets and find all the boat assets that uh, look like they might be you know, a little bit more beat up or just in need of repairs in general. Uh, but now we're moving on from that area and we're just working on a small marina where we're going to have uh, some more boats situated as well. So I'm using these nice pier assets that I used all the way back in episode 12 uh, when I made that little island that's out in the bay. That was one of my favorite builds in terms of the final result. I think it looks really nice and it just adds a, a unique location to the city you don't see in, in most cities. You're not going to get an island uh, that densely populated uh, of that size, at least. Anyway, I'm using those assets again. So I wanted this to be a bit more average of an area, a bit more standard, and this is probably uh, the sort of place that your average Toto Santos uh, citizen would go to uh, to launch a boat, or if they had a bigger boat, uh, potentially lease some space to keep it here. And then I'm also gonna make it look like there's like a business run out of here where they do uh, like jet ski rentals or something like that. And then as I'm doing this, I stumble across a uh, very nice little gas pump asset. So I just go back and, and put that on the uh, docks that we made before, just so looks like they have an area where they can refuel smaller boats like this. I wanted to have a nice variety of different types of boats here, of different sizes, uh, different uh, methods of propulsion, I guess you'd call it. So as we go through the build, I'm going to be just putting down different boat assets as I stumble across them, because I do want it to, uh, at the end, look like a nice, busy marina that's full of boats. Um, then we have the boat launch here, just very simple, like the one I made, I believe that was two episodes ago, three episodes ago. Well, anyway, we made it on the riverfront. Uh, so I just do the same thing with a retaining wall and sloping that into the water and connecting it up with some pavement uh, using that classic concrete brush asset that's been on the workshop pretty much since the beginning of the game, I think. By the way, check out that road asset. Uh, well, now it's on the bottom screen, now it's on top. That uh, dark gray one with the white lines. I think that's just a fantastic asset for something where it's, it's like on the fringe of a highly developed area. So it's still nicely paved and it has painted lines, but it's it's not quite as developed as uh, the real urban road. So it doesn't have sidewalks. It doesn't have a center line. Uh, and I just think that has a really nice look and it really fits these beach areas especially. And just gives it the feeling of being almost in like a small town on the beach. Um, I guess this neighborhood would almost be sort of like that. You know, its own little self-contained town that just happens to be right next to all the development. And I have a feeling we're going to be using that road quite a bit once we get to the outskirts of the city, because um, it just seems like the sort of road that would be great for a main road where you're not going to get much traffic through it, and where you don't need all kinds of lines and medians and sidewalks and that kind of stuff, uh, because you're not in the urban center anymore. So once again, I'm trying to find pretty much every single boat asset I have that could come in handy here, uh, both for floating in the water here and also for longer term storage on the shore. Don't ask me how they get those bigger boats in and out of this area, uh, because I have absolutely no idea. So I made it a tradition. Every time I make a boat launch in the city, and we're going to be making a few more, uh, I put down a, a pickup truck pulling a trailer uh, that once had a boat on it that is now down in the water. Although I don't actually put the boat down, I don't think. This person has just decided to uh, you know, launch their boat and just leave their, their truck parked there. And I love this boat storage asset. I don't know if there's like a particular technical term for that. Uh, just that rack with all those uh, small boats on there, really nice. Although it'd be cool if you could have a version of it with like a bunch of kayaks and canoes on it. I feel like it would be pretty fun to go kayaking here. And obviously boats are pretty expensive. So if you had space for kayaks and canoes and stuff, uh, you'd be able to draw more people to this area and uh, just allow more people to make use of it. 
And then I'm just trying to position boats in kind of a random manner, because really when I look at pictures of this sort of area, it looks random to me. <laughs> Basically, you just park your boat wherever there's space. I don't know. I don't really have any experience with marinas uh, in terms of actually having a boat there. I mean, I've walked around plenty of marinas. I don't think that's really <laughs> informed me on, on how you actually uh, manage it. And then we also have some boats over here on the beach, because, you know, not everyone would need to use the boat launch. Sometimes they just park by the beach and bring their boat out there, or, you know, carry it over from the neighborhood if they lived in that neighborhood, and just uh, push it off from the beach and go zooming around on the water. So you might have seen some decorations on the beach, um, well, to the left of screen now. Uh, so that's an area that runs between the riverside neighborhood on the island side of the river and this marina, and that was really just a trial run. Uh, just to figure out how I wanted to do a public access beach. And don't worry, we're going to be coming back in a future episode and doing plenty and plenty of beach decoration. I'm not going to tell you any more than that, but uh, but we're going to do a build that involves long stretches of beaches where you can take as long of a walk on the beach as you like. And then just filling in that little green space with some decals just to make it look a little grassier because I think a, a bit too much of the sand was sticking through. And I also put a sand decal down as well. Uh, just to give a nice smooth transition from the beach to the concrete pier there. And then just putting down this fence to make sure all the boats are safe. Putting down a few jet skis for that jet ski business that I mentioned before. And this is the end of the build. Next episode, we're going to be continuing on with filling in the island with a unique project that I'm very excited to share with you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Todos Santos. Here's the before and after over what we've done. And that'll be followed in just a second by the cinematics that hopefully will make up for the lack of cinematics last episode. Catch you on the next one. Bye.